Hello, and welcome to Clan Macad. Let's go through the basics of what you should expect to find in an engineering drawing and begin to unveil the methods of their creation. The first and hopefully most obvious aspect of a typical engineering drawing should be the geometry itself. This is all the lines of various colours and patterns that define the shape and form of the subject of the drawing using a few different viewing directions. The difference in geometry between a regular drawing and an engineering one is that it will follow a strict set of rules and measurement standards that will help ensure everyone speaks the same visual language as each other when creating these types of drawings. We will look at these rules in greater detail as we progress through the video series. Dimensions are more than likely the next thing you will notice when glancing around an engineering drawing. There should be sizes for all of the necessary elements of the subject in question to allow recreation or production. These sizes should also follow rules and should appear notably similar in format. Variations in this format will take place for different types of size reporting, such as the radius or diameter of a circle, adding in the respective symbols for each, or leading directly from a front-facing circle like the R10 radius does in this example, or the diameter symbol telling us the measurement on the right-hand side is of a cylindrical nature. The next category of information features two similar aspects that reserve the ability for the drafter to identify information that is still best served in a written format, or can be represented with less repetition than a graphical alternative. An example of this would be for curved corners, which are also known as fillets. If many corners on an object share the exact same filleting requirements, it can be tidier and therefore cleaner for the drawing as a whole to simply state where space is available that note all fillets are two millimeters unless otherwise stated. Therefore, instead of having R2 dimensions all around the drawing, one simple line of text is used. Now, that covers the use of notes, small optional written pieces of information. However, there is one mandatory, one that is absolutely required in every technical or engineering drawing, which is the title block. The title block covers all of the necessary contractual legal information regarding the drawing's subject, creator, version, and company-based information such as initial signatures, stating the drawing's approval and checking processes, along with cataloging numbers for organized archiving. The last category is one you probably won't, or in my opinion, should not see straight away within drawings as you learn to understand and analyze them. However, you should begin to be introduced to these once you are comfortable with all of the previous categories, as this is additional pieces of information that are added purely intended for those who are going to attempt to create or manufacture these um, subjects of your drawings. It tells them things like tolerances, surface finishes, simple instructions to remove artifacting caused by expected manufacturing methods. Make no mistake, it is next to impossible to create real components to the exact specifications given by the prior three categories. In short, information in this category is the recipe for a successfully produced component that can be used for its intended purpose. Now, there are two methods for producing engineering drawings. The traditional manual drawing method, where a series of physical tools on a drawing board will aid the drafter in following the rules that we will delve into in more detail as we continue. Or using CAD software, a rapidly expanding industry which, due to constantly new found advantages, is for the most part leaving the traditional methods behind. However, understanding the techniques of the traditional and manual methods uh, will only help you understand some of the rules in place and make you a better CAD user in the long run. As we continue in this series, we will focus on the drawing features themselves and not be biased towards either method. So if you're learning using a drawing board, CAD, or both methods for the first time, this series should serve as a strong middle ground explaining the drawing aspects themselves and allowing you to decide what the best tools for your situation are. Next up, we'll look at why we create engineering drawings to communicate this information, why these rules are important, and then go on from there to look at those rules in more detail. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.